What's up guys, this is Nick with Home Tree Woodworks and I have teamed up with Squid Poxy to make a step-by-step -step tutorial on how to turn all of this into this. For this board I'm going to be using this really nice piece of olive wood. Here is our dried flowers. We use silica gel to dry our flowers out. It works really well. Uh, and here's, of course, our squid seal and squid clear fast epoxy. Let's get started. For our first of four layers of epoxy, we're going to be using squid seal. Uh, this has a one to one mix ratio. I recommend mixing by hand to limit the amount of air bubbles you bring into the epoxy. Uh, about three to five minutes of mixing and uh, you'll notice there's no more cloudiness and that means you're ready to go. This first layer is only going to be about a sixteenth of an inch thick. I do this just to give the flowers a surface to sit on. This is also a good time to seal the edges of the wood you're working with. Uh, I just use a silicone brush and kind of coat any of the exposed edges. This will prevent the wood from releasing any air into your epoxy causing air bubbles. And now you can take your heat gun or your torch and get rid of any of those bubbles that have risen to the surface. And this layer will cure for two to four hours uh, until it has hardened but is still tacky. And now we are ready for the second layer. And we'll be using the squid seal again for our second layer. This is going to be the exact same process as the first pour we made. Uh, purpose of this layer is going to be to hold our flowers in place for when we make our main pour with the squid clear fast. At this point you're going to want to make sure you have all your flowers close by. Uh, squid seal has a 20 to 30 minute working time. Uh, you're going to want to make sure you have all of your flowers placed in the epoxy within that time period to make sure they are held in place for the next pour. Go ahead and hit all those surface bubbles with your torch or your heat gun. And once we are bubble free, we can start bringing this piece to life. And here is my lovely wife doing her thing with the flower arrangement. Uh, this is definitely the most stressful part of the process uh, because of squid seals short 20 to 30 minute working time. Something that we've found is really helpful for this step is to uh, once you have your mold made, Go ahead and put your piece of wood that you're going to be working with in and just uh, do some dry runs with your flowers. Once you're happy with an arrangement, you can snap a picture and that way you uh, have a pretty good idea where you want to have them all placed. And once you're happy with your arrangement, we're going to let this cure for two to four hours and we'll be ready for our next pour. For our third layer, we're going to be using our Squid Clear Fast which has a two to one mix ratio. I like to use a drill with a mixing attachment uh, for the clear fast, but this can also be mixed by hand for three to five minutes. And here we go with pour number three. In this step, we're gonna fully submerge all of our flowers. Be sure to pour nice and slow to limit the amount of air bubbles you bring in. Squid Clear Fast has a much lower viscosity than the squid seal that we have used in the last two pours. This makes it much easier for any air bubbles that are in your epoxy to rise to the surface for you to pop with your torture heat gun.
And after your flowers are fully submerged, there's a good chance you might find some loose debris or just small pieces of your flowers that have risen to the surface, which can easily be removed with a pair of tweezers or a small popsicle stick. And now hit your bubbles with the torture heat gun and we're gonna let this cure for 48 hours. And now let's take it out of the mold and see how she looks. Keep in mind the temperature of your space that you are pouring your epoxy in could affect the time it takes it to cure. Uh, I keep my shop around 75 degrees and this is about exactly 48 hours after our pour and we are ready to start cleaning it up first up we're gonna run it through the planer and clean off any of the excess epoxy until we have a nice flat surface on the top and bottom Next, we'll head over to the table saw and clean up the edges and get it cut to its final size. And as a response to the inevitable comments about my poor dust collection, yes, I realized that my dust collection was clogged, and yes, I did decide to push through it, and yes, it was a huge mess. And moving on. And next up, if you're planning on putting handles on your board, you can go ahead and drill those holes now. I use this Craig cabinet hardware jig. Uh, it works great, perfect spacing every time. It's super easy to use. And now we're gonna add our edge profile. My go-to is a 45 degree chamfered edge, but I do think uh, round over edge would look pretty cool on this board too. And now let's get to sanding. For the top and sides, uh, I start at 80 grit and work my way all the way up to 240. And you're gonna wanna make sure you are wiping off any excess dust in between each grit. And we're gonna speed this up because who wants to watch sanding?
And once you have sanded all the way 240 grit, you can use some acetone or denatured alcohol to uh, clean away any excess debris or dust from the surface. And now we are ready for the fourth and final pour. And for our final layer, we will be again using our squid seal. This will be our flood coat and it will leave you with a crystal clear, high gloss finish. And once we have evenly coated the top and the sides, we will hit the surface bubbles with our torch or our heat gun. And we will let this cure for 24 to 48 hours. And if you added holes for handles, once your flood coat has fully cured, you can uh, re-drill through that hardened epoxy and then we can start sanding the bottom. First thing we're going to do is clean up all those uh, spots where the epoxy flowed over the edge. Uh, I use a 60 grit sandpaper on this. After that we are going to dry sand from 80 grit all the way up to 600 grit and then we're going to wet sand the epoxy only from 1000 grit up to 4000 grit and again I can't imagine that anybody would want to watch me sand in real time so we are going to speed this up And once you have finished wet sanding your epoxy up to 4000 grit, you can go ahead and apply your preferred wood finish uh, to the bottom of the board. I use walrus oil, cutting board oil, and wood wax, which I highly recommend. Then you can screw on your handles, add some rubber cutting board feet, and sit back and enjoy the finished product. Uh, if you are someone that is wanting to try to make something like this, I hope this tutorial was helpful. 
And if you have any questions at all, do not hesitate to ask. And if you like what you see, check us out on Instagram, TikTok, and Etsy for more content. Thanks for watching.